On Tuesday, visitors to Yellowstone National Park fled when a hydrothermal eruption erupted a few miles north of the famed Old Faithful Geyser. No one was injured, but the incident destroyed a nearby boardwalk and prompted officials to close the park's Biscuit Basin area for the rest of the year. While the damage may seem alarming, the phenomenon is a normal and common occurrence in Yellowstone, occurring at least once a year. Officials with the U.S. Geological Survey say hydrothermal eruptions like the one this week are not a sign of an impending volcanic eruption. However, the explosion has sparked an online conversation about what would happen if it were a major eruption and what would happen if the Yellowstone volcano system were to erupt. According to the USGS, a super eruption at Yellowstone would have regional impacts, including ashfall and short-term changes to the global climate that could last for years or even decades. The states closest to Yellowstone, such as Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, could be hit by destructive pyroclastic flows, which are a mixture of lava blocks, pumice, ash, and volcanic gases that flow around a volcano after an eruption. According to the USGS, the thick ash deposits would bury much of the United States, and the injection of such a large amount of volcanic gas into the atmosphere could drastically affect global climate. Much of the rest of the country could be blanketed in places with ashfall that could be more than three feet deep. In research published about a decade ago, USGS scientists Larry Mastin and Jacob Lowenstern, and National Science Foundation researcher Alexa Van Eden, analyzed where volcanic ash would fall if a super eruption were to occur today. To understand what would happen in the present, the scientists modeled the location of ash deposits found from previous major eruptions at Yellowstone. You can see some of those ash deposits on the map below. However, this map is only based on ash deposits that have escaped erosion and rapid dispersal long enough for humans to find them. This map doesn't account for thinner deposits that may have reached beyond the area marked on the map above. Since then, scientists have used historical evidence and current weather patterns to model the location of ash fall from a hypothetical Yellowstone supereruption. Models have been used for decades to estimate ash fall during eruptions. However, it's only in the last few years that TEFRA models like ASH 3D have been developed that use changing 3D wind fields, allowing us to model eruptions that last for weeks and spread ash across continents, the USGS article about the study says. Using these models, an example of which you can see below, USGS scientists learned that super eruptions spread ash in a fundamentally different pattern than smaller eruptions. Super eruptions create clouds of ash and volcanic debris that are far less affected by winds than smaller eruptions. As a result, thick ash would spread in all directions away from the eruption site, gradually thinning out with distance. Unsurprisingly, areas closest to the Yellowstone Plateau would likely see the most ash. In Billings, Montana, for example, the model suggests ash could be more than 1,000 mm thick and more than 3 feet thick. Farther away from Yosemite, in places like Salt Lake City and Casper, Wyoming, ash could reach between 1 and 3 feet thick. Even areas not affected by the ash layers mentioned above could see ash after a Yosemite super eruption. Much of Wisconsin, Illinois, Oregon and Washington are all outside the range where ash layers could accumulate up to an inch, though parts of Oregon and Washington closer to Yosemite could see more. Farther afield, much of the East Coast, from Florida to Maine, would likely see ash.
However, the USGS notes that most of the doomsday scenarios depict far worse impacts than scientists believe will occur. Even the researchers associated with the above models note that if Yellowstone were to erupt, it would almost certainly not cause the kind of ash spread outlined above.